fortunate enough to be joined by Gypsophilia live in the studio right now. Can I get a little sound just to make sure you're coming through the air? Oh, actually, I turned you down. Checking one, two. All right. Microphone radio check. Radio check one, two. There we go. <laughs> you guys came all the way from Canada just to be on the show today. Long drive, man. Yeah, I bet. Well, I appreciate the effort, really. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone would do it. So. It's our pleasure, for sure. Um, <clears throat> The name of the band is called Gypsophilia, as I said. They're from Halifax, Canada, and they're joining us live in the studio today. Very excited about it. They're performing down in, uh, is it Cambridge at the Beehive, or is it Boston? In, I think it's in Boston. Right though, in Boston. Uh, this is our first trip to the U.S., so we, uh, we're just learning our, our geography here the on the geography, ground. Geography, great. Yeah, first hand for the first time. So the first trip to the U.S., that means this is your uh, first trip to New Hampshire, first time in New Hampshire? Absolutely, so yeah. I mean, as, the, a, as a band, for sure. Right. Individually, there might be a, uh, there might be a couple other visits in the history, but... Definitely not as a group, for sure. Right on. Well, good. Well, welcome. I'm honored to have you here. Uh, to welcome you to New Hampshire is the first. Uh, hopefully, I'm a good ambassador. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> when you leave, you go, I'm never going back to New Hampshire again. Uh, <laughs> but today is, uh, for everyone at home, it is, uh, you're listening to WSCA 106.1 FM. The name of the show is called Stay Tuned. And I try to have live bands in the studio every single week. And as I said, this is uh, Gypsophilia. They are here joining me this Friday, June 22nd. So what I think we'll do, guys, is uh, why don't we start with something live, and then we'll come back and talk about whatever you want to talk about. Great. Sounds perfect. All right. All right let's do it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Awesome. <laughs> that was absolutely fantastic. That was Gypsophilia live at the WSCA studios. Brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm going to keep turning you. I turned you down there. Sorry. <coughs> Steve, can you do me a favor and just check that video and make sure that we're sent it there? All right, I, was, I was pulling on the cable. We're not only doing a radio show, we are also trying to do the multimedia TV show thing. So you guys will be famous in New Hampshire now that you've come here we've decided to come <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to uh <coughs> talk to you a little about uh, well, it was the first time in the states you got to play stone mountain last night mm -hmm. and uh i've heard nothing but glowing reviews about that venue and about the people that run it and i wanted to find out if they were true or not. everything you have heard <laughs> is true yeah that was that was probably safe to say one of the best evenings of music that we've ever really that we've ever you know as in, our in our lives as a band we've never really been treated quite that well it was awesome nice and like a full house and you know just a wonderful you know the people running that place are know precisely how to do it mm -hmm. and they're doing it up just the right way it was such a pleasure and it's not you know you can't you can't always expect to be this far from home for the first time and have a whole room full of people there you know a great audience and a great you know a great show unless unless someone runs unless the someone knows right. what they're doing exactly oh, yeah. uh that's well that's a great uh, great introduction to to the states then that's uh hopefully the rest of the tour goes as well yeah it sets, <laughs> the, bar, sets the bar pretty high it's, it's pretty high, high right yeah, we're, well we were joking well, it, outside it, that we're back batting a thousand so far yeah, so uh, okay those are hall of fame numbers right on so hopefully it continues to go <laughs> that way you're um how long are you in uh how long are you doing the states here? I, I know you're playing in boston tonight uh connecticut new york a couple of new york new york city yeah well we're and on the road in total for 20 days and uh -huh. then it's kind of a loop we started in halifax nova scotia going sort of down south and we'll go back home after playing um after playing in the u.s back home through ontario and quebec uh -huh. and new right. brunswick so a bit of a northeast loop right on so yeah 20 days away from home and about a little more than a week in the states all told nice yeah well that's fantastic and i know you guys have toured a lot through canada um so now you're venturing down here uh, let's uh, let's talk about how the band got together. How long has the band been together? Um, uh, play, t playing together, well, the first time we played together was 2005, and uh, the first album that we put out was 2007. So it's uh, uh, it's definitely since 2007 we've been playing playing consistently and getting getting traveling and making records. Uh, the first time we played together as a band though was a, a concert at the jazz festival in Halifax that was billed as a, a Django Reinhardt tribute show. Uh -huh. And we that that gig like on stage at the gig was the first time that we were all in the same room at the same time, because uh, we had you know had a chance to only to rehearse a little bits and you know in smaller parts of the ensemble. But right. So uh, that was the impetus to get the band together was that first concert. And so, so it was just a click thing. You all sort of came together for the first time in that and in different. Yeah, yeah um, motivated by that, I think Alec and Nick and Adam had been playing some of this music. Um, in this sort of this style uh, in the, at the beginning playing a lot of tunes you know written by Django Reinhardt and uh -huh. things in standards of the of the idiom you know um, and so the band kind of coalesced around that um, that kind of kernel of inspiration right. and then has rolled forward from there these days it's kind of like the stylistic launching pad for the band um, but we still we don't we're these days just playing all our own music right. composing and stuff and me you know, mixing stuff together indiscriminately and you know, not trying to be authentically anything other than ourselves. You mm -hmm. know. So you don't go back and say, does this fit into our core seed or whatever? You just uh, pretty much. Yeah, well, it's all. pretty. I think it's <laughs> become kind of an organic mm -hmm. thing. So I think, you know, we might not. There are things we might choose not to do because it doesn't maybe right. fit our character as a band. But it's uh, 
what does fit our character is you know put mixing a bunch of stuff together that is not you know not maybe not the standard musical right. choices for uh you know a gypsy jazz band well i gotta tell you the sound is uh fantastic the new album constellation uh brand new disc from the band is uh excellent you know this is my first uh my first introduction to your music and i know you said you had one other one other album which i hadn't heard but um, I was very excited to get this in the mail. And Wicked. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're proud of that record. You should be. For, uh, you know, it represents even, you know, even more of an effort uh, on our parts because we made that record in Montreal with a, at a really cool studio called Hotel Tatango uh -huh. uh, and uh, with a producer who has recorded Arcade Fire records and, you know, lots of cool Montreal bands have come through that space. And uh, it was a, a little more of a project getting the whole band to Montreal. We, in fact, uh, traveled on the train, paid for our train tickets by uh, playing music in the caboose, mm -hmm. uh, you know, spent, a, spent a week in another city, kind of an immersion into the music, and, and uh, that, the record, that record is the result of it. Nice. But uh, a really, that was a really gratifying experience, getting to make a record like that. Right. Traveling away and being in a great space all together, kind of sequestered. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes that's good, and sometimes uh, you know <laughs> the band just yep. doesn't last. You know? Yeah, well, listen, you're, getting, you're getting us on the, like day two, of day two or three of the trip. Right. You got to talk to us on day nineteen. Exactly right. We'll have some uh, some bad inside jokes and a lot of beefs, I'm sure. <laughs> now it'll be fine. I think you guys are going to be all <laughs> right. Dirty laundry in the car, you know. <laughs> well, that that goes without saying. But um, time right now is about 19 minutes past the hour. We're live in the studio with Gypsophilia, all the way from Halifax, Canada. So proud to have them here. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we go to another live thing? And, awesome. Uh, this next tune we're going to play is kind of, you know, in a way represents that, or is a good example of that kind of musical um, musical mixing that we like to get up to, which is, in this case, uh, taking a little bit of Jewish music and a little bit of Jamaican music and, and trying to figure out where the, the meeting point is between right those two. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
awesome. <clears throat> Fantastic. That was Gypsophilia live in the WSCA studios. Brilliant. Steve, can you do me a favor? Can you see if there's another one of these over there? Right down here somewhere. Can you do me a favor and throw that on that mic over there? The, uh, so? Yeah, actually both of them. We've got the, uh, we've got the air conditioner. Off the walls here. Can't hear it when you're playing, but when you're talking, ah, oh, so much better. I love that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we want you guys to sound good. First trip to New Hampshire, and all you know, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to leave a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Gypsophilia live in the studios, as I said. Well, how about Ross? Why don't you introduce the band? Tell everyone. I know we're on radio, but we are also on TV. So, um, <laughs> so introduce the band, and we'll. Uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, My pleasure to introduce Alec Frith on the guitar, Alec. right there. Adam Fine on the big bass. Adam. This is Nick Wilkinson on the guitar as well. Matt Meyer playing trumpet. Gina Burgess on the violin. Nice. And Ross. And I'm Ross, Ross Burns. <laughs> Ross Burns. Um, and you also play with, it, uh, do you still play with a piano player? Because I've seen some video videos it's online. And it's true, yeah, he's got enough babies that he has a hard time getting on the road. Oh, yeah. So we've, uh, he's, at, he's at home taking care of his, his new kids. But we, uh, yeah, so we are seven normally, and uh, sometimes, sometimes just six when we're traveling along. Oh, yeah. But yeah, Sagiv Orr would be the seventh piece. Uh, I mean, traveling with six is a challenge in itself. Traveling with seven would be well. Yeah, we were trying to we were <laughs> trying to figure out as we were organizing this trip what the one yeah. vehicle solution for right. for traveling with this band is, and it's it's a pretty caravan. big it's a caravan <laughs> because even because of the double bass. Yeah. Makes us more than six. You know, we were traveling on the train at one point and had to buy a seat for the bass. It's you know, it sometimes needs its own ticket. Now, do you all t pitch in for that? Or you just say, Adam, that's your choice of instruments. Are that's you right. Gotta, you got to buck up for it. <laughs> Adam is S O L. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, bass players just don't get any respect. Yeah, he could have right chosen to play the piccolo, or that's he could it. be a singer. He could yeah. sing those bass parts, whatever. <laughs> he decided to bring that thing. I get it. Well, I appreciate it for one. <laughs> I'm not going to pitch in for the plane ticket, but you know, yeah. I do appreciate it. I got to give you that. Uh, when he's a bass player. He gets way more gigs than the rest of us. So. Oh, is that, is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it would be just the opposite, actually, but I'm <laughs> glad that's working for you. So you're in, you're in, you're in the states now. I'm not sure if it's the same. But yeah, right. Banjo players and bass players, they don't get any respect. Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, it's different. In Canada, it's the opposite. Man. Yeah, uh, it's, that's there's it. never enough good banjo players. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to uh, export a few. <laughs> <How's that? laughs> yeah, isn't there some sort of free I'm, I'm trade? I'm teasing thing all you banjo players out there. I love banjo, actually. Uh, so, um, so w how did? Um, well, I suppose this is sort of individual uh, questions, and you know, you're the only one with a vocal mic, really. Uh, well, Gina, you could talk to her if you wanted to. Um, how did how did uh, the gypsy jazz thing come to sort of manifest in a bunch of guys from Canada? How did that? How did you? I don't know. That's probably too broad of a question well, to I think get the, into. Like the, I think the easiest, or like the most common denominator, would be the quality of that music, that those mm -hmm. recordings from that time, like those amazing recordings uh, with Django Reinhardt and Stefan Grappelli the, are the you know the really famous recordings right. from the 30s and, and 40s that are just so awesome <coughs> anyone who's heard that music is you know is you can't you don't have to be a fan of jazz music or of instrumental music or of this or that you can just it feel the energy and the mm -hmm. fire and the verve in that music and you know I think that there's something about that that caught all of us you know right uh, and the chance to do it live and you know have that be able to at least experiment with those same colors like that the kind of band that you know there's no drummer there's instead there's rhythm guitar driving the thing and no violin as a not the typical jazz instrument but in that context in in that kind of you know in that tradition anyway it is so mm -hmm. that's been really fun to has this always been um has jazz always been what you've dr gravitated towards i mean, I mean I think as a group, I mean, everyone uh, in the band has a slightly different relationship with, with jazz as music, jazz as a music, you know. Right. Like, um, for sure, like, um, I know that Gina, maybe for one, as one example, s maybe not as jazz oriented a training, like more classical music and folk jazz music and. Until eight years ago. Oh, when really? Started playing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's a whole world out there. Yeah. Well, that's nice. It brings it a sort of a fresh, uh, a fresh take on it, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's good. But there's a there's pretty wide array of musical backgrounds. I mean, that's one yeah. of the things that makes the band what it is. Is that everyone's mm -hmm. got a lot to bring to the table from different ends of the musical right. spectrum. And you can hear it on the album. And again, the new name of the new album is called Constellation. Um, it uh, 
yeah you 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 tap into to different areas and different genres and yeah i mean uh, we were we were almost different time frames too i can picture myself back you know in different places you know it has a definite visual feel for uh, me that's anyway. awesome that you say that because yeah we think for sure the music has when it's you know it's nice when music has that kind of cinematic quality and right. can transport <coughs> you especially there's something wonderful about instrumental music that can really because there's not that one literal lyric that like locates the thing right. in a time uh, exactly, and a place yeah. you can it kind of lets your imagination uh, run wild and you know music is such a powerful such a powerful tool for that absolutely it, it can be transformative and trans transportative i guess if that's the right word it, it does move me to certain places awesome. and and i like that i like the uh the cinematic quality that that line you just said because that's exactly it because it does uh for me anyway um it i found myself thinking about places i've never been to but imagine i was awesome. there you know that type of thing yeah right that magical land where jewish music and jamaican music meet it, it, yes you know? <laughs> in, in, in jamaica exactly. yeah. jamaica right all right i want to go but uh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fun it's all it's fun also to like as a way to to get people into the music also to 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 give it a narrative quality like when we're also composing music or playing music doing our best to to use the to use a, the palette that we have at our disposal to, you know, try to make something that has some shape, some rise and fall, and mm -hmm. a, you know, a thread of storyline or a, some sort of narrative quality that, that uh, rather than us just getting up on stage and like now it's time for Alec to play something right. awesome, and now it's time for you know, you know, that jazz soloist kind of model, which you know it's, it's great if you're if you're just checking out the individual soloists and mm -hmm. but it's it's also fun to sort of build something as a band that's not just a feature for one person but it's like no right and, has and, a shape. and from what i've seen on you know some of your live performance videos and concert you guys seem to really um it just looks like a lot of fun in in, in those showcases you guys do a really great job of sort of uh, it's sort of like the band is highlighted but you know, you bring out different aspects from each person. It's great. Yeah, so well, if we weren't having fun together, we would not be yeah, still well, playing ho together. Hopefully <laughs> that's the case, right. Because yeah, it, it isn't like you're making the billions of dollars that uh, you want to be making at yeah. this point, I'm we sure. We would settle for a billion, you know. Yeah, just one billion. <laughs> yeah, we're not greedy. <laughs> a single bill would be cool. There you go, see? There you go. Humble <laughs> and not greedy. I love and that. And you would take a billion Canadian, you know, that'd be fine. A billion Canadian. <laughs> I, I don't even know what what is more nowadays. You see, that's probably being greedy. Actually, de yeah, it depends. It <laughs> <laughs> yeah, depends on the exchange. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. Well, well, you may have to set off a Jamaican music, and we'll see what happens there. But <laughs> that's a whole other kind of currency. Time right now is 2.32. We're live in the studio with Gypsophilia. They're performing actually in Boston tonight down at the Beehive. I've never been there. Hopefully it's a good show down there tonight. Uh, and it's not too far of a trip if you guys want to head on down and uh, see these guys perform live tonight. I encourage you to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but if you want to learn more about them, you can go online to gypsophilia.org. And uh, why don't we do another live thing and then we can come back and yeah, chat definitely. about what you want to chat about. How's that? Cool. This is a, well, maybe a and a good example of that kind of uh, uh, narrative storyline. This this next tune is is a story about my girlfriend and I and a street corner that we used to always have to part ways on. Uh, she lived you know, on my her girlfriend and street corner. You know, she's not. There's <laughs> something about that that has a whole nother. I'm picturing something different. <laughs> not not a lady of the night. <laughs> okay, I'm to put it uh, delicately. An upstanding I'm sorry, I interrupted girl. your story. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Sometimes during the day, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, okay. He <laughs> so threw you off. I apologize. No, it's perfect. I'm not. I'm afraid that I'm, my imagination is just wandering. Uh, that's with the power of music. You right. Know. Okay. Anyway, so uh, so here's our musical picture postcard <laughs> of the that street corner in Halifax where Agricola Street and Sarah Street meet, and uh, us uh, us trying to us parting ways or deciding which direction to go. Uh, in a in a snowstorm at that corner, nice. that street corner.
Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. That was Gypsophilia live in the WSCA studios. Very nice. Thank you very much. That was very nice. Turn you back up. Um, if you want to learn more about Gypsophilia, I encourage you to go to their website, gypsophilia.org. And um, so I learned from looking you guys up online that uh, Gypsophilia is a is actually baby's breath, so the uh, the flower, which I never knew before. It's true. Which is I don't know why. Only the hardcore botanists get that one. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely not a hardcore botanist. <laughs> I do know my weeds, but that's a whole other thing altogether. Um, <laughs> but, um, so there you go. Um, so um, I noticed here that you're playing at uh, you're playing at the Radio Bean in Burlington. It's true. Yeah. yeah and um, if you go there, you have to have. I just went there for the first time, like mm, two months ago, maybe. Um, you got to have the chicken and waffles. Done. It's great food there. <laughs> great food there, but the chicken and waffles. You, that's what everyone recommended when I went through there, and it was it was delicious. We so. uh, <laughs> we put w especially when on the road, food trumps music as far as what is the most important thing mm -hmm. to us. Definitely. And well, there's great food there at that place. It's awesome. So, well, yeah. in fact, when we were <laughs> when we were organizing the tour. <laughs> a great part of our energy was spent figuring out where the coffee and the food mm -hmm. should be eaten. And you arrive in town as a musician, and you already know where you're going to play. Right. Hopefully you've organized that in advance. <laughs> but you don't know where you're going to eat. And so you, you roll into town, and you're like, yeah, where, okay, hey, man, hey, hey, you over there, hey, hey where, do I get, where's, where do I get lunch? Mm -hmm. Where do I need, where should I get a cup of coffee? Uh, and you have to think about that three times a day. You probably usually play like once, maybe twice right. a day. So food is much more important to us there than coffee, so I'm glad well, for the recommendation. Yeah, and chicken, right, and waffles, the, chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. And whatever you go there. I mean, they have different uh, sort of like um, styles of meals from different areas of the country. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it is it's pretty cool. And they do a great job uh, presenting live music. They, they play it. They have music seven days a week. It's fantastic. They really yeah, I was do looking, at their, looking at their lineup, and it's just completely jam-packed. Yeah, like and I, I think I went there on a Tuesday. I, I did go there on a Tuesday night, and it was, it was mobbed. Beautiful. Yeah, so... Hopefully that is, uh, and that's July 4th, so that'll be fun up in Burlington. My, my advice to you is if you're driving um, in this caravan of yours, if you're in Burlington, make sure you park in a designated parking spot. Do not legally park, because that was my downfall. <laughs> <coughs> I, I come out, we went in for lunch, I came out, my car's gone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got a $100 tow fine, um, and it was a $50 ticket on top of the $100 tow fine. It was insane. Uh, we don't need um, that. So I said I'd never go back again, but the chicken and waffles may bring me back. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Time right now is 2.42, alive in the studio with Gypsophilia. Uh, well, hopefully you've had a good time in New Hampshire so far. Can't, can't yeah. be. We're, in fact, going to the beach after just to seal nice. the deal. All right, but good. it's been beautiful. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. It's a My pleasure. My pleasure. It's, uh, um, it's an open-ended invitation. If you ever want to come back to the States, you're always Man, welcome. We'll be here. back. We, right, if good. we have our way. If you have your way, all right. We will be back. Um, and tell Kyle, Kyle from... Um, from Forward. From Forward Music, right? Your boss, from what I understand. It's hard to see him as a boss, actually. <laughs> but Our tiny <laughs> mustachioed boss. <laughs> he's a mustachioed boss. Yeah, you said that he might be with you today. He's so meeting, yeah, he's yeah. meeting us here. He's meeting us today. I think we're we're meeting up a little bit later, but mm -hmm. he's uh, he's going to be on the road with us for a couple of days, oh, helping nice. us drive drive the van and nice. uh, figure out where to eat he's been he's been down here before on a couple yeah. of tours with some other bands he plays with nice so he knows a little bit more about where to eat already so yeah, and he's uh, he's, he's in the band uh, olympic symphonium which is one another one of my favorite bands that did just fantastic so yeah he's been well his uh his record label that has been helping us put out this record has been super helpful it's really fun to have uh other people helping us do our thing because we uh, it's a, i would imagine it's impossible with, especially with the you know with the size of the band you had it's hard to it would it would be much much more difficult if you didn't have people behind you sort yeah, of helping you along the way and we you know it's something that every musician i think learns as you start putting out records right. because your first at attempt is usually very home or self done you know mm -hmm. home spun right. and some in some fashion in it <coughs> you know you can't start playing music without being uh an independent organization right. all to yourselves so um but it's fun to find people that you trust and who know more than you and can compliment mm -hmm. you and and it opens up. And, uh, it opens up. I think anyway. It opens up that uh, door for more creativity. Because when your f brain's filled with everything else that you have to do, business, booking, travel, you're whatever. You're so right. You're so right. It, exactly. It's uh, yeah, it's a little bit limiting. If you're stressed out about who's watching the merchandise, you're right. probably not playing <laughs> right. what you should be playing at that moment. <laughs> Absolutely. On stage, so. Well, it's been a pleasure having you here. Uh, we have time for one more song, one more live thing. If you want anything else, you want to add before you go. Um, uh, 
No, that's perfect. All right. Awesome. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Let's hi, do it. Hi, up. everybody. <laughs> hi, mom. <laughs> if you're listening. Hopefully mom's listening, <laughs> wherever she's at. All right. Well, let's uh, let's do one last live then. This is a song from the record. This is uh, written by Matt Meyer on the trumpet. It's called Trick Wick. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Jim Sophia alive in the WSCS studios. Thank you so much. That was a blast. Thank you. Thank you. Um, dot org. if you want to learn more about the band. I encourage you to uh, look them up. Go see them live tonight if, if you can. Get down to Boston at the Beehive. Um, and, um, you know, I'm sure they have, uh, I'm sure that you have all the social media stuff going for you, Facebook and all that. So you can go on their website and sign up for all that stuff as well. The name of the new album is called Constellation right there. 
And um, what I think I'm going to do to close out uh, to close out this uh, segment is just play the last cut off the album. If that's all right with you, that is perfect. This is a uh, I, a rugby song and rugby uh, Catherine song? Kim at the same time. Okay. Um, Vino Grigio is the name of the song, and uh, there you go. Constellation is the name of the disc. We'll be right back in just a bit. Awesome guys, holy crap. <laughs>